Good morning. Good morning. Hey, you guys are awake. That's awesome. It's good to see everybody this morning. Um, you know, as, uh, as I was watching that, I was thinking about the fact that, okay, so this October we started our 13th year down in North Toledo. And to be honest with you, I'm surprised that we've made it this far. <laughs> because the amount of obstacles that we've had to overcome to get to this point has been overwhelming at times. And, um, okay, so how many of you guys, have you guys ever put videos on Facebook? Anybody here ever put videos on Facebook? Okay, some of you, maybe. So you can go back and keep and look at those, right? So I was doing that the other day. I went back and I looked at some videos from like 2010 that I had put on there right after we planted TNC. And as we were, as I was looking at those, um, these thoughts of when I, was, when I was recording that on my phone, I remember how incredibly overwhelmed I was at what God was calling us to. And so Jason, he just set up this door this morning. And this door represents, represents um, something that it was probably the number one thing that keeps us from experiencing what I'm going to call God realities. You know what a God reality is? A God reality is something that takes place when you know the only thing, the reason why this would take place would be God. It's not your own efforts. It's not your own intelligence. It's not your own resources. It's only God could do this. And so this door right here represents this number one thing. It's happened in my life, and I'm sure it's happened in your life. And so this door has a title. And maybe for some of you this morning, this is where you're at with whatever's happening in your life. And this door is called fear. Fear. You know when this door gets really, really big? Is when you're facing things that are overwhelming. Okay, so I'm going to start this, this old saying. I want you to finish it for me. You ready? Here we go. God will not put on you more than you can handle. That sounds so good. That's a great phrase. I love that phrase. It's very spiritual sounding. The problem is it's not biblical. We have to be very careful as far as some of these things that we say that are not biblical. In fact, do you know where people say that that comes from? Listen to what this verse says. I'm going to tell you where that comes from. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Listen to this. Paul was writing to a group of Christians in Corinth, and he wanted him, them to understand exactly what had been going on in his life. Listen to what he says. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience, and God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Okay, stop right here. Okay, so there are a number of words here that will kind of give you an idea what this verse is really about. It's the words temptations and temptation. So this verse is about what? Temptation. It's not about life circumstance. In fact, the same guy that wrote that wrote this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. Listen to what Paul says. We think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure. And we thought we would never live through it. Do you know what Paul is saying? We had gotten to the point and we faced these circumstances where we could not handle it. Have you been there? 
Over the last 12 plus years, there have been circumstances that have been so overwhelming for us that we had felt like we couldn't handle it. This door was huge for us. It's at that point when you are so filled with fear that you don't know if you can handle it. And this is what I believe. I've been praying for you. When Kirk talked to me about coming and speaking to you this morning, I have been praying for you for months. Because I believe that God is positioning First Alliance Church to do something that is, I would call, a God reality. And there is one thing that could keep you from stepping into that, and it's called this thing called fear. Fear. Especially when it comes to your future. In fact, some of you, you walked into this place this morning ready to give up. Maybe it's marriage. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's your job. Maybe it's your kids. Have you ever been like to that place where you're like, God, if you don't do something, I'm done. I'm done. How do you get enough courage to not only walk up to this door but grab the handle and step through it. How do you get there? So we're going to look at this awesome story this morning about this king who faced overwhelming circumstances and found the courage to not only walk up to this door, but found the courage to actually step through it. So we're going to take time this morning and we're going to pray. Because I am well aware of the fact that you brought in some heavy, heavy burdens in here this morning. And if you would just make a deal with me for the next 30 minutes, maybe, hopefully, <laughs> that you would lay those at the foot of the cross, okay? Okay? And you allow God to do something in and through you this morning. So let's pray. Jesus, thank you for this place. Jesus, thank you for Kirk's leadership. Thank you for his desire to follow your lead. Jesus, I pray for us this morning. Holy Spirit, would you be our teacher? I want to get out of the way so that you do what you do best. You reach us right where we need it the most. And Father, I pray for freedom this morning, for a release this morning, for hope. By the time we're done here and we leave this place, God, I pray that our souls would be filled with hope. We love you, Jesus. In the authority of the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Okay, so we're going to be in 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles Chapter 20. Okay, so this is about a guy named Jehoshaphat. Now, Jehoshaphat, um, other than having a really horrible name as a kid, I could just imagine how he got teased with that name. But, okay, he wasn't a superstar. In fact, in chapter 18, he really did some really knuckleheaded things. And then in verse Nine, chapter 19, he was on a roll with God. And then in chapter 20, things started to happen. Listen to what this says, okay? In chapter 20, verse 1, it says, After this, the armies of the Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Midianites 
declared war on Jehoshaphat. Okay, so now this was a huge thing because up until this point, God had been protecting them. And they had had this huge season season of protection and peace. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, bam! That's what happens in our life sometimes, doesn't it? Out of nowhere, we're overwhelmed. So I'm going to tell you a couple stories for us. So in 2011, okay, we had just started TNC. And so our, our service is on Saturday night because nobody's going to get up on Sunday in our neighborhood. That's just the way it is. And so here we are, um, Saturday night, and after the service, you know, we're, we're getting things picked up and getting ready, whatever. All of a sudden, this young lady runs in and says, Pastor Pat, Pastor Pat, Willie, he's down on Mongolia Street and he's got a bat. And he's going to start a fight. Okay, so, so with, with the alliance, like, like when you get your pastoral license, you get this little book that says um, uh, pastoral handbook. So I went in there and I started to look for, let's see, bat, bat, bat. Is there anything about a bat in here? And I'm like, oh, God, well, that's useless. So then I ran down there, and sure enough, there's Willie with a bat. And he's, he's swinging it or whatever, and I'm like, okay. My, 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 my door grew. And I'm like, what, what am I, what am I, I'm like, okay. So I just jumped in. And I'm wrestling Willie, and we're on the ground, and all of a sudden his mom, who was sitting there, decided it would be a good idea if she joined in too. So now all three of us were rolling on the ground. I'm fighting the bat away from Willie, finally got it out of his hand, right? And then Willie's brother came in and took care of that, and, you know, all of a sudden, and then after a while, whatever, it settled down. But my door grew immediately, Okay, so then let's fast forward to 2015, okay? Uh, we're getting done with our service. I don't know why these things always happen at the end of our services. Oh, my gosh. So anyway, so our service has ended, and we're gathering or whatever. All of a sudden, we hear gunshots right outside the church. Blam, 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 blam. So whenever that happens in our neighborhood where we are, I'm always, I go outside to find out what's happening because I'm stupid. Okay? So I went out there because I wanted to make sure that none of our, who got hurt, so sure enough, a young man that had been involved in our ministry, he got shot and he was at the fire station. And as we're out there, you know, now there's more and more crowds that are coming out of whatever. And we're at the fire. The fire station's here. Our church is here. There's a road right here. And so we're walking. All of a sudden, this car comes screeching right by us, going full board. They go wide towards the fire department. They see the two cops there. They, they you know, push their brakes er, right there. They spin around, go this way, and go right down Ontario Street. Our door grew right there. And it's at that point when the door gr grows that now God is saying, what are you going to do? Are you going to stay on this side? Or are you going to trust me to step through the door? So for Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, he didn't see it coming. He didn't see it coming. Verse 2, listen to this. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army from Edom is marching against you far beyond the Dead Sea. They are already at Hazazon Tamar. This is another name for En Gedi. Okay, so these guys, okay, so they, they come and tell Jehoshaphat, not only, not only, is there a, an army coming towards? They're at your back door. There's no time for you to 
figure out a counteroffensive, what to do, nothing. And then verse 3, Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news and begged the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. So people from all the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord's help. So, okay, okay, listen, listen. Okay, so, so this, is, this is what he did. Okay, so he says, you, you, we're going to fast. Put down your chicken leg. We're going to fast. We're gonna, this is a fast fast. Okay, we're going to do a fast fast. Put down your food, and we're going to start fasting right now. He didn't know what to do. See, see, I have this, I, and I don't know where we got this, but I had this weird thing that, that as a Christ follower, I should always know what to do. Especially when, you're over, when I'm overwhelmed. Because see, we've, we've bought into this God will never put on you more than you can handle theology. And if you don't know what to do, maybe it's because you just don't have enough faith or you're just stupid. So we're going to jump to verse 12. Here's a king. He's trying to do the best that he can. And then listen to what he says. Verse 12. He says, oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. From the time we opened up that neighborhood church, that's exactly how I have felt. There are so many different days when I'm face down, flat, on the floor, telling God. Do you ever tell God stuff? Do you, do you ever, not, not pray, like tell God stuff. you ever do that? Like, God, if you don't come through, we're in trouble. Like, God doesn't already know that, right? But that's where... We were. I am, I am powerless, powerless against this mighty army that's trying to destroy our neighborhood. So the first thing, you know what you need to do when you go and face that door called fear? You need to admit to God, I'm overwhelmed and I don't know what to do. You just tell him. I don't know what to do. And I'm overwhelmed at this. I'm not sure what my next step needs to be. Do you know what that's done for me? It's made me stop boasting in what I can do. And it makes me desperate for what God can do. That's when... I'm able to actually stand up, go to the door, crack it open, and step through. All the things that have taken place at TNC in the last 12 years, Rahab's Heart, our ministry that helps women out of adult prostitution, our free clinic, the empowerment house, our intern house, the youth development center, the plank factory, the new parking lot, right? Now we're looking at... Um, trying to find a new place for the clinic. Um, we have a, a, a staff couple, Mark and Shelly. They decided they moved into the neighborhood, had to restore a duplex for them. Amy, another staff member, moving into the neighborhood. When we started TNC South in the middle of the pandemic in South Toledo, did we know how any of these things were going to happen? No, we didn't. All we knew is that God was leading us. He was leading us. How many people in the Bible 
have you read where God told them exactly and laid out everything when he told them to go do something? They didn't know. Zero, except Jesus. He knew. Right? He knew. But we didn't know. Jehoshaphat didn't know either. Listen to what it says in verse 13. All the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives and children. The second thing, when you have this door called fear, the second thing that you need to do is you need to seek God. Seek God. I'm telling you that God has used that verse in these last 12 years to drive me to my knees and just put my face on the floor and just seek him for wisdom, for endurance, for patience, for courage. When's the last time you were face down on the floor Desperate for God. Verse 14. Says the spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name was Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, son of Benaiah, son of Jael, son of Mataniah, a Levite who was a descendant of Asaph. He said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. Okay, stop, stop, right there. There's a key word in here. It's the word listen. So many times when we feel overwhelmed, when I have felt overwhelmed over these years, when I'm like, God, I just, I need to hear from you. I need to hear from you. Can I just tell you, like, when you get to those places, don't waste it. Because it's going to cost you a lot. It costs you a lot. Let's finish that verse. The rest of 15, he said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, listen, King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. The battle that is going on in North Toledo is not my battle. It's God's battle. The battle that you face here in these surrounding neighborhoods, it's not your battle. It's God's battle. He's, it's, it's shifting our thoughts. I had to shift my thought and realize that the battle is not mine, but it's God's. It's God's battle. All he's asking me to do, walk up to this door called fear, open it up, and step through it. That's what he's calling. He's asking me to do that. He's asking you to do that. Because he goes, when you do that, you're going to experience some God realities that will blow your mind. Because you'll start to experience the reality of God. Not just the talk of God, the reality of God. When you choose to do that. Okay, so you remember when we started? We started with in Corinthians where Paul was writing that letter and saying how overwhelmed he was. And, you know, there were those times where he just, he was done. Okay, let's finish 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. Okay, listen to this. We think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed 
and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. Verse 9, listen to this. In fact, we expected to die, but as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God who raises the dead. Where are you today? As you see this door called fear, where are you today? How big is your door? Does it have to do with your family or your job or your church or your marriage? I'm going to give you an opportunity this morning. I'd like to do that, to give people an opportunity to actually embrace what God has been speaking to you. All of you, you have a post-it note that there was, that was that's in your insert, okay? I want you to take out that post-it note. Okay, find it. And this is what I'm going to have you do. There's going to be a song that's going to play. During that song, I want you to write on that post-it note that thing called fear. You know what it is. And I want you to write it out on that post-it note. You don't need to put your name on it. Just write it out. And then I want you to come up here and I want you to stick it on that door. And then go back and have a seat. So the song's like four and a half minutes, five, that should be enough time. So when that starts, write out your post-it note, come on up, stick it on the door, go back and have a seat, and then I'm going to close this. You are here by divine appointment this morning. Maybe this is your time for God to do something amazing in you this morning. All right, so... Go ahead and start that song. Write that out. Come on up, stick it on the door. Okay? Here I am Down on my knees again Surrendering all Surrendering all And find me Yeah. 
stand and sing that together, okay? Let's turn it up. Here we go. what I see on that door, what I see there, is an amazing opportunity for you to experience God on a whole new level. Those of you that are here this morning, this right here could be the one thing that God is saying, I'm just waiting for you. Would you please walk through that door? Because what I have for you on the other side will transform your life. Pray that that's the case for us. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you that you were willing to step through that door. Father, thank you. I pray for us. I pray for me. That to you, you alone, would be the one that I trust to carry me. All those fears that are on that door, Jesus. Give us the courage. Thank you that you're faithful. You're worthy of our trust, Jesus. We love you. You're the reason why we're here. You're the reason why we move and breathe and have our being. Bless this place. Bless this church. I pray that it would be a place where people who feel disqualified from God would be embraced and that this would be a place where they can experience your love. We love you, Jesus. Be our provision. Be our protection this week in the authority of the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen?
Amen. Thanks, brother.